Tyler, it's been a few months since we made a video and talked about Albemarle, the lithium producer. In 2023, we talked about the realities of being in a cyclical business and why we saw some potential over the long term. But the trick is always you invest through the trough and you got to go through it. And since we made that video through now, I know the stock has certainly not done well. The lithium industry is a bit of a mess right now, and the stock has absolutely whipsawed so far this year. You ready to tell people what's going on with Albemarle and what we think is going to happen next? This feels like it's been an eight-second rodeo ride as of late between what's been going on in the lithium market and what's been going on in Albemarle uh, specifically. So let's see if we can hang on and figure this baby out. I'm Jason Hall. This is Investing Unscripted. This video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, please go to our special link. It's fool.com forward slash unscripted. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. If you're looking to make investments right now, it's worth checking out what The Motley Fool has to offer. Okay, Tyler, it's a company reported earnings. The morning of the 15th, so we go back to the trading day before, stock was up after the earnings came out. Went on a little bit of a bull run. And then you see here more recently, it is absolutely cratered. If we go back to the beginning of the year, it's down 19%. We go back over the past year, down by half. We look at it from the all time high. Over the past three years, it's down almost two thirds. It has certainly been a roller coaster, both up and then more recently up and then back down. Yeah, it's look, we've, I, I feel like we've mentioned this a couple of times, but it, it bears repeating every time. This is a commodity. Lithium is a commodity market. Commodity markets move at lightning fast speed sometimes. And the reason that happens in these particular markets is because there has been such spectacular demand growth. And when that happens, these companies like Albemarle, like its compatriots, like SQM in Chile, a lot of Australian rock miner, lithium miners, they have been spending lots of money to ramp up production to try to keep pace with all of this demand that has increased lately and what was thought to be increased demand over the long term. You look at every bank projection, investment bank, analyst, Bloomberg New Energy Finance, and they keep talking about electric vehicle penetration growing to 20, 30% of global sales and possibly the global fleet in 20 years, that requires a lot of lithium. And we're not even talking about battery storage or all the other things that we anticipate lithium to be used. And so when you have all this happening at once, you're trying to grow incredibly fast. And the minute that growth slows down, commodity prices fall through the floor. We've seen it with solar panels before. We're seeing it here with lithium. I feel like this is the second or third lithium cycle that we've gone through like this since 2018. This isn't Albemarle's first rodeo when it comes to stock volatility. And any investor who is looking at this industry has to keep that in mind. This is not some aberration. This is how it is. And it's likely how it's going to be for a long time. Because as that supply and demand balance falls ever so slightly out of balance, prices are going to absolutely whipsaw. Income statements are absolutely going to whipsaw. And stock prices are going to do the exact same thing. Let's take a look at Albemarle's results from last year and also from the fourth quarter because it illustrates what you're talking about. They also have a slide in their presentation that breaks out lithium commodity average prices during different periods of the year. And that will show you how quickly the numbers change and the underlying mathematics that their business operates on have changed. Let's start with the business results first. So you see on the right, you'll see $9.6 billion in revenue. That was a 31% increase. That was a very big increase. So they sold a lot more lithium. The volume, the tonnage of lithium they sold was up substantially, as you'll see, because commodity prices came down so much, particularly in the second half of the year. And that hit the bottom line, the big 42% reduction in net income, adjusted EBITDA took a hit. And in the fourth quarter, lithium prices had come down so much it was starting to show a revenue decline. Revenue was down 10%. And then the operating leverage, because guess what? You can't bring, Tyler, you're talking about the commodity prices change far more quickly than you can change your operating costs and capital commitments. As a result, net income swung from $1.1 billion profit in the fourth quarter of 2022 to $618 million net loss in the quarter into 2023. So let's talk about the key underlying factor that affects that. So there's the demand for lithium. Their volumes did continue to grow, but it doesn't help much when in 2023, your average lithium price was $40, but you ended the year at 15. And most of the second half of the year, 
was half the price that it was at the beginning of the year. And Tyler, correct me if I'm wrong, but that $40 average was substantially lower than the average back in 2022. Lithium prices started falling before the end of the year. They started falling in November of 2022. Pretty much all of 22 was a just an absolute boom time for the price of lithium. You're looking right. at dollars per kilogram right now. From January of 2022 to November of 2022, average somewhere between $70 and $80 per kilogram. And then right around November is when we started to see a precipitous decline in lithium prices going from above 80 in January to, to the depths of almost $20 in May, back up again in July, and then as the year started to settle out and we started to see waning demand, we've had a lot of talks about slowing demand in China. We've seen most recent, a lot of EV companies talk about slowing sales growth and expected slowing sales growth in 2024. Just a lot of talk of things slowing down. And as a result, that's why we're here at this basically unit price that we saw through the depths of the pandemic. Overall, the earnings results, I think they were relatively in line with what analysts and investors that follow the company closely were expecting. The guidance was also relatively close to what was expecting. You're not going to hear Albemarle make projections about lithium prices. They do that internally, I promise you. They're going to hold their projections pretty closely. They don't want to share that with their competitors. But more recently, that chart that we showed where the stock price fell significantly. Tyler, why has the stock come down again? What's affecting it? And, and what are the implications? Albemarle announced that it was going to be offering $1.75 billion worth of depository shares. So basically, they're doing a secondary issuing of stock. And the reason for doing it is because they have very aggressive growth plans uh, to expand its mining of facilities around the world, as well as its processing facilities. And at current sales prices for lithium, it doesn't have the cash available to fund these developments without either taking on substantial debt or issuing shares. And something that you and I have talked about for quite some time this year and going into last year is that interest rates are considerably higher, which means that when you add debt, that's going to come at higher interest rates. And perhaps it was just maybe management decided that it would be better to try to issue shares rather than take on the long-term obligations that are required when you add debt. So we're headed, you're here today. Stock is down a little bit over 10% as we're talking. And it's pretty much coming down to this because it's, it's a $13 billion company issuing $1.7 billion worth of stock. So it's more than 10% of shares outstanding. That's pretty considerable dilution. And you do the math on the decline of the stock price, the trading day that the announcement comes out and affects. And the math lines up pretty closely that the value of the company is going to come down roughly equivalent to what the amount of dilution will be. And for a company like Albemarle in its current situation, it makes sense. Sometimes a company might do a capital raise and the stock is neutral or maybe even goes up. If the sentiment is positive. The sentiment is definitely negative and bearish for lithium right now. We know that the long tail for demand is still going to be growth. The amount of supply is the question right now. We're in a weakened demand, but the supply picture continues to increase. And that's going to weigh on prices for some period of time to come. Hence, Albemarle is saying we want to continue to pursue these growth projects, but we need additional capital to do it. So you put all that together and that's where we are today. Tyler. So my question, you look at Albemarle stock and you think over the long term, neither one of us are going to make a prediction on when we think the cycle is going to turn. But making a long-term prediction, five plus year investments, is, is Albemarle an appealing stock to you to think about buying? Like you said, it's hard to evaluate because sometimes a lot of people are buying this on a bet of where lithium prices go. So let's be kind of conservative here. And management kind of estimated that at $15 per kilogram of lithium, it expects to get adjusted EBITDA somewhere between 900 million and 1.2 billion. So about 10% of its market cap, it can produce at prices right around where today, and which have historically been more or less where they are. So even at these low prices, it is expected to be profitable. It continues to grow its production. So even at these prices, it's going to remain profitable. So profits will increase 
at, even at if prices were to stay at this kind of low price. My kind of summation is, yes, I think this company, at least over the next several years, in, in terms of a business, is going to do okay. What the stock is going to do over the next couple of the year or so, there's part of me that says it could get worse from here. So I, certainly not something I want to like back up the truck to today, but people who are interested in lithium and, and kind of the long-term prospects of lithium mining might want to say, this may be a decent time for starter position and kind of one of those add a little bit here, add a little bit there. Don't get too aggressive because of the very possibility that we could see further price declines. I think you're exactly right. I'm going to share this on the screen. You see about 23 times analyst estimates for forward 12 month earnings trades for about 8.8 .8 times last year's earnings, which we know are definitely going to come down. I think the valuation you know, 22 times might seem expensive for a miner like this. And without understanding the broader context of the longer term tailwinds of growth and Albemarle's history of kind of delivering pretty well on their projects and ambitions, normally I'd say, yeah, that's expensive. But I think you take that one year earnings multiple, and then you think about three to five to 10 years down the road. And it's probably going to work out to be a reasonable, if not cheap valuation with Tyler's caveat. I don't think you try to buy today to get the perfect low price. If the price falls from here, it's because the environment's deteriorated more. And that doesn't mean you buy more if the stock falls. If you start a position or you buy shares at this price, it means you look really closely at the business and find out, is it sentiment driving it down or is it further deterioration in the business that's driving it down and then evaluate? The best case scenario is we see the cycle turn sooner than later, prices improve, Albemarle's decision to go secondary to raise capital to invest in future growth pays off. And you're actually averaging up, but you're averaging up because the business quality has improved and earnings have boosted and you're buying a better quality business. It's not, this is not a time to, to load up here, but it is certainly a time to think about nibbling around the edges, increasing a position, starting a position, and then building it up based on focusing on the quality of the business and the overall environment for lithium and lithium prices.